Here, uh, I want to talk about transforming. And to transform, you have to have like a base equation or base function. Some people call them common functions. Some people call them uh, parent functions. Uh, our book calls them common. Um, so here's your common function for 1 over x. You guys are familiar with this one. And I, we have on here some points uh, so we can uh, help. It, it'll help us understand it. Uh, notice that this, odd, uh, this is an odd function. That means um, if I plugged in negative x, I would get a negative f of x. Uh, it, in other words, it has symmetry about the origin. That's what we talked about mostly. We'll talk some more about this stuff uh, next unit. Here is 1 over x squared, which we were just introduced to uh, with, the, with the points. Uh, which, um, well, it's kind of obvious because I put it on here. Uh, which uh, common function is this one related to? Yeah, the 1 over x one. Okay, but... There's some changes done to it. So if I, if I write the 1 over x, what are some things that I would have to add? See, f of x equals 1 over x. What would I have to do to this right here so that it matches that? You have to add a 3 right here. Okay, what else? Okay, I'd have to multiply the top by 4. Now let's see if we can get that 1 to move over. There we go. Um, and then I have to multiply that by 4. Okay, so we have a multiplying by 4 and an adding by 3. Um, what do you guys uh, think that adding 3 is going to do to our graph? It's going to shift it left or right. Okay, it shifts it horizontally, and it's going to shift it left. If you guys uh, recall, um, I don't know if you guys recall this, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay, okay. Um, the H moves it horizontally, whatever is being done to the X, that, that would move it horizontally, and then the K moves it vertically. You guys remember what the A does? It, it makes it taller, makes it shrink, whatever. Yeah, it depends on what it, uh, what it is, if it's a fraction, a proper fraction, or, or a, a regular number. So this 4 right here, what do you think the 4 is, kind of acts like over here? Does it act like the K, the H, or the A? It acts like the A, kind of, kind of stretches it a little bit, changes it a little bit, um, changes its shape. So, <clears throat> how would I change these points right here? For my new graph, what would my new points be? With if it if I if it moves to the left three right here, how how my x x is going to change? Instead of one half, it would be negative two and a half. Instead of 2, it would be 8. Okay, the 4 gets multiplied to the y, and the minus 3 it gets taken away from the 1 half. <clears throat> well, let me try to approach this another way uh, by showing you guys graphs. And so I have, um, I have a, the red graph right here, which is uh, the common function. And then for the blue graph, that's the one that I'm going to do some of the shifts with. I uh, don't need you. Okay, so I add 3. See, it look like that. Um, notice that uh, the blue graph shifts to the left, uh, left three. Um, that I mean that mean that changes the the vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote was at x equals zero. Now it's at x equals negative three, which makes sense because if you took this denominator right here and set that equal to zero, you would get negative three. So it changes the it shifts the whole graph over to the left, including the horizontal as or I'm sorry the vertical asymptote. Uh, notice that the horizontal asymptote, however, did not change. Okay, now I'm going to take out that plus 3, and let's look at what happens when we multiply um, this 1 right here by 4. <coughs> uh, so now we look at it. Red is the original function, the common one, and blue is, is the new one. When we multiply it by 4, it kind of changes the shape. It, it, um, it's almost like you can take the, take the ends if you were to like grab this end right here, uh, if you were to grab uh, this end right here with your hand, and then grab this one over here with your hand, and then pull it out, then you get this uh, this blue line right here. It kind of stretches it out that way, which is kind of different. Um, now, if I put in both of what's going on, uh, I add three and multiply by four, it shifts it to the left and it kind of stretches it out. So that's how the shift looks on a graphing calculator, but how would you do this without a graphing calculator? 
And to do it without a graphing calculator, uh, you look at the original coordinates and then make uh, the transformations to the X and the Y coordinates to get your new graph. So let's go back to uh, what we were doing before with the coordinates and see how that changes or see how the, the transformations and that's um, the adding the 3 and the multiplying by 4 changes each of the points. So here for the first point I showed you guys we we subtracted 3 from the the x and then we multiplied the y by 4. So we got that. So what's our other point going to be? If I subtract 3 from 1, what's that going to give you? Negative, Negative 2, I multiply this by 4 by 4. I get 4. If I um the la the next point that 2, I'm going to subtract 3, so I get -1. Multiply that by 4, what's that going to give us? That's going to give us 2. So now um, I can do a rough sketch of that one curve. So I just have to go, uh, see, negative 2 and a half and 8. So negative 2 and a half, well, that's negative 2 right there. So negative 2 and a half will be right there. So I go up to 8. Oops, I don't have enough space here. Let's move this down a little bit. 8 goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we go up to here. Oops. The other point is negative 2, 4. Negative 2 goes up to 4, so it's right there. It drops quite a bit. Uh, negative 1, 2 goes to there. Okay, and, and I can't really get a good picture just using these three points of my curve. And so what else can I do to try to get a good idea of my curve right here? I could plug a, a 0 in. I could plug a 1 in, a 2. Which one would you guys want to plug in? Zero. Think about what we're going to pl plug it into. One. Yeah, I would, I would pick 1. And the reason why I'd pick 1, if I, if I plug 1 into this, that's going to be a 1 plus 3. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So it's 4 divided by 4, which is 1. So it goes up to 1 right here. So now I have an idea of what my graph looks like right here. Okay. It, I know the graph did not shift up or down, so my uh, asymptote is going to remain the same as the as the common function. And now I just need to um, graph the other line. Okay, did the hor did the vertical asymptote change though? Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you know that? Yeah, you set the bottom it, equal it, to zero. yeah, you can set the bottom equal to zero, or you can think, oh, it shifted to the left three. So that means your horizontal asymptote has to shift to the left three. And so I go over to three right here. And you have a horizontal asymptote right here. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do the other points, but we know that the other graph goes something like that. Okay. And to find those other points, you would have to manipulate the numbers um, from the original graph. Okay. I'm going to give you guys time to graph this next one. But I want to talk about it first. Okay. Um, actually, change that 4 so that it's a 1, because I don't want that many changes. Change that 4 so it's a 1. Okay. What does, uh, what does this minus 1 do? That one goes down. That's like a K right there. What does this uh, minus 2 do? To the right. Now, because it's squared right here, I know that this is going to be my common function for this uh, to transform this. So, uh, why don't you guys work on this together right now, and then uh, I'll, I'll throw up the answer in a second. Okay, so here we have uh, the 1 over x squared graph, and um, what happened was it had a minus 1 out here. And so what does that do to my, my graph right here? Down one. It puts it down 1. The horizontal asymptote goes down 1. Okay, so the minus 1 changes the horizontal asymptote also. Uh, if I just had, what, what, was, what was down here, minus 2? Uh, x minus Whoa. 2 squared. X minus 2 squared? So it's in this. So I got to put a minus 2 inside right there. Okay, so what happened to the graph? Shifted to the right. Shifted to the right. I throw the minus 1 on there, it shifts it down and to the right. Okay? Now, if we go back to this graph and do trying to do this without uh, a graphing calculator, uh, you know, because uh, you just saw it, that. Uh, this minus 2 right there is, is adding 2 to the x's because it's shifting it to the right. So every one of these x's right here is going to get uh, a 2 added to it. Uh, that way I can find its new points. 
and uh, you guys saw that the minus one on the outside of the the, the rational expression here uh, shifts the whole function downward and so that would change all of our y values uh, to uh, down one so you subtract one from each of those y values and once you do that you could do that to those points uh, you'll be able to graph them and get a good idea of what this graph uh, looks like on your own without a graphing calculator